um sounds like a short introduction doesn't it well i thought the same too and i decided to change that so let's do it again shall we so hello everyone i am a 16 year old young innovator and entrepreneur named prajwal and h i'm the co-founder and chief product officer at cloud attack i'm recognized as india's youngest certified azure ai engineer by the india book of records and recognized as india's top 20 under 20 by y canvas india and brain feed india magazine so for the record i love tech in business and for the record this is my first ted talk thank you and i'm telling you all this so i can be invited for many more in the future so you know just a year ago i recall trying to find ways i can speak here i would go on i would search i would fill up forms and all of that but i didn't really find the right way to actually stand here on the stage and be able to talk but you know trust me it feels great when that same opportunity one fine evening calls you and tells you hello sir do you want to speak at a tedx event i was like of course yes it's been my dream to be here and actually talk here or deliver a small keynote and like no one's ever on the stage told you so like i introduced myself before i am completely fond of tech and business and i'm so fond of it that i've made crazy projects like an iron man helmet whose face lid opens up with a touch to an iron man arc reactor made completely with leds yeah i was amused with iron man but you know after some projects or you know after making some fun projects i realized the fact that that was it i mean it was fun and it was really fun making too but there was nothing else to it and when i realized this i met the love of my life so i can see all of you you know some people here blushing right now so before we go any further let me ask you some random questions so on your way to the you know auditorium how many of you guys actually face potholes raise your hands if you did actually you know what let's tweak the question a bit how many of you guys ever face potholes wow that's a nice number i can see people recalling the excitement and you know all of those journeys experiences they've had with potholes that's nice now how many of you guys keep the water on or the tap on while brushing your teeth or especially while washing your face please raise your hands and let's not keep it quiet this time let's make some noise if you do it wow that's nice so these problems that i just told you about is something we see you know every day or we see it in our day to day lives too right so i was i'm one of i'm one of those people who face these problems too but i decided to go a step ahead and actually solve these problems so i believe that there are six steps to being able to solve a problem and while actually doing this is again i'll keep telling this again and again how i met the love of my life so number 1 just start because when you don't start anything there's no way you're going to go there's no where that you're going to get to if you're not going to start don't be hesitant just go search out for problems search out for solution search out for data but the point is just start next very important empathize now imagine there's a blackboard in front of you i take my nails and i start scratching the blackboard oh right i can see a lot of you got goosebumps and chills down your spine well did you actually think about this there's no blackboard here and i didn't scratch anything but you guys were still able to feel something well that's empathy it's as simple as that you were able to feel something that never happened or you were able to put yourself in that situation and imagine about what would have happened if you were actually facing it right now that is the power of empathy and you're just steps closer to being able to empathize with someone else if you're able to put yourself in someone else's shoes then you are able to empathize with that person connect with that person and discover their problems like they are your own next after this so all of these principles i'm talking about you people who are familiar with design thinking would already know about it the next part of it is definitely define you define certain data points you get to define your problem most importantly after that you start ideating that is you start coming up with solutions now you come up with many solutions and you start building prototypes for them maybe for the best one you combine multiple together that's completely up to you then you start testing out your solution in the real world and most importantly you get feedback and all of this process that i've told you is never ending why because innovation is guys limitless now all of this is fine but you know in this one stage of empathizing i found a small problem and the problem was that the market actually lacked empathy sometimes so just to give you a better context about it there was something called ata classes that started in my school it stands for utter tinkering lab 
and it's in short an initiative by the government to foster innovation in kids. Now, the entire agenda of this program when I joined was that we had to solve problems using technology and mind it. The solutions had to be unique, accessible and feasible. Now, when I'm telling three years ago, I'm in 10th grade right now and I was 7th grade back then, trust me, these terms were heavy on me. These were heavy terms used and I was also pretty curious. So, I went out, I started searching for problems and we all know the fact that we have no less of problems. You see anywhere around you, from the smallest things to the largest, you know, uh, incidents of your life, you can find problems almost everywhere. But what I found with the problem was actually, astonishingly enough, also a solution, or rather many solutions sometimes. And I thought about this, and I was curious, because if there is a solution for a problem, then why am I even able to see that problem? Why am I able to see a solution and a problem together at the same time? I mean, if there was a solution, the problem should have been solved, right? It should have vanished. But then after some research, and I actually went down into these existing solutions and I dig deep. The first thing that caught my eye, any guesses? The price of the product. The price of the product of these innovative solutions was so much that trust me, even if I had got pocket money, I would have not spent it on these products. Why? Even though they, they were a social cause, I discovered they lacked empathy and they were not affordable. Well, that's when I decided to do something about it. This looked like an exciting problem to solve, so I began solving it. And hence, I met the love of my life. So for all of those who have been sitting on the edges of their chair, to listen to this astonishing love story, the love of my life is no, none other than my vision. My vision of solving social problems using affordable technology. So I asked you some questions if you guys remember, right? Number one was about the potholes. So I was on my, you know, I was on a leisure ride with my dad in a two-wheeler, and I went through so many potholes that I was about to just fall off. And I live in Bangalore, by the way, so that should justify it. Bangalore weather is crazy. So after going through all of those potholes, usually what we do is we complain, right? We complain to ourselves, we start cribbing about it, we start blaming people, and this entire blame game goes on. But I decided, let's do something different this time. Instead of the traditional approach of just, you know, cribbing about it, talking about it, complaining, I went home and I did some research. And I wanted to know why this problem existed. Because everyone faces potholes, right? So I found out that the government actually had resources to fix these potholes. Pretty obvious. But then why weren't they fixed? Because the government lacked data of where these potholes existed. Makes sense. Because when a pothole is there or when any civic problem has to be reported to the government, there's a lot of tedious steps involved. And for simple problems like potholes, trust me, you wouldn't take out a sheet of paper, write a letter, see who this letter should go to, follow up with them and then get that pothole fixed. No one wants to do that. So I empathized and I looked at the problem from another angle and I created something called as Fix Me, a mobile app through which you can report civic problems to the government with just few clicks of buttons. And that particular app has won me so many competitions and has won me so many places and it's created an impact too. I told you about water if you guys remember. So in my school, so I'm a 10th grader of course, so I saw people actually, you know, leaving the taps on and of course they are children. So uh, they, le they left the tap on and they would just keep running around and water was being wasted like crazy. So I decided instead of actually going and educating, educating them again and again to turn off the taps, I thought let's find a unique way to tackle this. I came across something called as a smart water tap and after seeing the price like I told you, I know why it wasn't being used at our school or perhaps any other school. And that's when I decided to make something called a smart water tap that is really, really, really affordable and at the same time more advanced than the ones you already get in the market. It has more features, it solves better problems and you have more amount of, uh, you know, control over the tap. And that's when I solved that problem as well. Now my vision, like I told you guys, solving social problems using affordable technology. This vision has helped me the most in one of my projects called Netra AI. Like the name suggests, it's something related to eyes or you know, Netra. So, one fine day for a school assignment, I went to an NGO and this NGO basically helps blind children learn. So for all of those who've been to blind schools, you know, been to these uh, NGOs who help blind children, trust me, it's an awesome place to be. It'll inspire you like crazy. So I actually went there and I saw the state and I decided that, you know what, let's actually help people out there. So I offered them some financial aid, as much as I could, of course. 
but they very very respectfully rejected it they said it's not the money that we need but rather we need volunteers i was curious right because i was offering them money but they asked for volunteers i asked why do you need volunteers the simple answer was this is you know a blind school and we need people to read out stuff to these blind children i was like okay and then they told me that not everything is accessible in braille you have very few books in the world that is accessible in braille that blind children can actually read now what about those other books okay you need someone to read it for them right and i was like i'm this you know techy guy i was like i start giving suggestions they're like hey why don't you use google lens why don't you use this why don't you use that and all they told me was that children didn't like this robotic voice that these you know particular ai agents or these ai models had and that completely made sense to me because i wouldn't like them either and that's when i started empathizing with those students i talked to them and i came up with a project called netra ai what is netra ai it is a smart wearable glass through which you can actually read any content out of books now that seems similar to google lens right now what's different it analyzes each and every sentence in that particular book or that page and it actually analyzes the sentiments behind that sentence and it modulates the voice accordingly so if, to give an example if it's an angry sentence right the voice would be angry if it's sad if it's happy it would be sad the voice would be sad and happy respectively and also with that i added a small joystick so that whenever you know kids of course so they if they forget to understand what they're listening to they can always move back like a virtual cursor and this project is still under development but when i show the prototype and it just makes me so happy looking at the impact it can create the impact that what would happen if blind children actually started using this in real life when it's out and the impact it created how much it can help their lives and that's truly motivating so we all know that technology is advancing at a rapid pace and it has the power to make human lives better forget human lives it has the power to make lives better but it won't be possible to do this if technology is not accessible and it is not affordable thank you